everyone has a story to tell. There is power in telling your story. It can be a very empowering experience for people to tell their story and have someone who will actually listen. Today, I am going to tell you part of my story, not all of it, just the part that has to do with dedication, resilience, self-efficacy, and never giving up on your personal goals and ambitions. I'm going to start with a part of my story where I completed my Bachelor's of Social Work from Illinois State University in 1989 and went directly into the Master's of Social Work program at the University of Illinois. I loved everything about higher education. The experience of being on campus surrounded by people with a passion for teaching and learning. I loved notebooks. Keep in mind it was the late 80s and early 90s before laptops and iPhones. Uh, textbooks, walking to class, finding a quiet nook to study in, writing papers, being challenged to look at the world around me from a whole new perspective. I loved everything about the college experience so much that I knew that one day this is where I wanted to be, working on a college campus, challenging and teaching others the same way that I had been challenged and taught. But then life happened. Following a series of events, I found myself living as a single mother caring for two daughters. Please don't get me wrong here, I have absolutely no regrets regarding the course that my life took. I loved being a mom to my daughters. Some of my best memories are of the many hours spent together as a family of three, playing hide and go seek in the backyard, playing catch, riding bikes, going for walks, swimming, shopping, watching movies, always together. As my daughters got older and began to pursue their own interests, there were endless hours spent watching softball games, basketball games, tennis matches, track meets, volleyball matches, cheerleading competitions, chorus concerts, band concerts, and school plays. It was an amazing experience to watch my daughters do the things they loved, but times were hard too. It was not easy raising my two daughters on my single salary. While my daughters were growing up, I worked as a school social worker, 26 years in this profession to be exact. I always volunteered for the extra duty stipends to su supplement my income, bus duty, lunch duty, recess duty, summer work, etc. Additionally, I found that one job was never enough and I always had to work two jobs. First, my extra job was in food service, serving at local restaurants. But eventually, I found my way into an opportunity to teach as an adjunct instructor at the community college level. I'll get back to this again soon, but first I need to finish this part of my story. The days were long, but the years went by quickly. Every day started off at 5.20 a.m. with preparing lunches for the girls, fixing breakfast, doing laundry, then going to work. After work, I would go directly to my second job, then home to straighten up the house, look over the girls' homework, and finally sleep, maybe for five to six hours before getting up to start this routine again. However, like I said earlier, I loved being a mom to my two daughters. Nothing made me more proud than to see them accomplish their goals and succeed at the things that they were doing. The nights that I was away because of my second job gave them an opportunity to bond in their own way. They still to this day love to tell me of their adventures that they experienced together while I was away at work. As I mentioned earlier, I eventually had an opportunity to teach at the community college level as an adjunct instructor. This experience served to reignite my passion for higher education. I myself returned to school and earned a second master's degree, this time in educational administration. My experience as an adjunct instructor with a local community college eventually led me to teach at their satellite program in a medium security correctional facility. This opportunity proved to be one of the most rewarding 
powerful experiences of my life. I continued my work as an adjunct instructor teaching sociology courses at the Correctional Center for a total of 13 years. During this time, I met some of the most intellectually talented and gifted students, students who had the same passion for learning that I had, but students who were facing immense barriers and obstacles to achieving their educational goals due to their current state of incarceration. I made sure that during every class I taught, each student was given the opportunity to tell his story, an opportunity to share and feel empowered. Many of these stories included a common theme, one of a life cut short, tremendous promise, ability, ambition, but also debilitating poverty, abuse, racism, pain, and suffering. There were many moments of laughter that were actually shared in that classroom as students recalled and discussed humorous moments from their childhoods, moments that had not been recalled or shared for several years. But there were also tears shared in that classroom as well, as students shared painful pasts and remorse for decisions made and anguish regarding current circumstances. One of the most powerful moments in my life occurred one night in that prison classroom. It was near the end of the semester, December, and students were giving their final semester presentations. All at once, everyone stopped, unprompted, as across the hallway, the Spanish worship program was singing Silent Night. There was something eerily beautiful and profoundly moving about being in this dark place of despair, surrounded by these talented students and hearing the most beautiful music I have ever experienced. That was truly a memory I will never forget. Life continued on this way for several years. Eventually, my oldest daughter graduated from high school and went away to college. This was followed a few years later by my youngest daughter graduating from high school and leaving for college. Suddenly, I found myself struggling with the emptiness of our home. The years spent in a whirlwind of activity were over, and I was faced with a profound sense of loss. Who was I now, and what was I going to do with the rest of my life? I realized that this was the time for me to pursue me, to realize the dreams and goals that had been put on hold for nearly 30 years. So here I am now telling you that it is never too late. Sometimes life happens and causes you to have to postpone your ambitions, but not give them up. Never give them up. I am now in my mid-50s, pursuing and living my lifelong goals. I am the field director and an instructor for the ISU Department of Social Work. I now have the opportunity to work on a college campus, challenging and teaching students the way that I was challenged and taught as a student. I have the opportunity to inspire students to pursue their goals and ambitions and never give up, no matter what life sends their way. I am also working towards a Doctor of Health Sciences degree. Yes, I am probably the oldest student in my classes, but doesn't someone have to be? To me, it doesn't matter that I will be almost 60 years old when I finish this program, as well as a grandmother of three. I will have done it. I made it. I feel like I conquered this thing called life. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this chapter of my story. I encourage you to tell your story to someone who will listen and appreciate you and create that sense of empowerment that comes with telling others who we actually are and where we have been and what it took to get to where we are now.